What's going on, Jeff fans? Happy Friday. I don't know what's happy about it. Rough 48 hours. I'm still not happy with the decision to move on from Mike McCagnan. Um, check out nysfmag.com the next couple hours. I, I broke it all down on there. Uh, my thoughts on why they decided to move on and Chris Johnson's role in that and Adam Gase's role in that as well. Um, one of the big things that just kind of stuck to me was when you look at the Rams and you look at the Bears, right? Those were teams that similarly went through a massive, large-scale rebuild, right? And they had the wrong coach kind of leading the way as they were rebuilding. Les Snead was GM for five years. In year five, they went 4-12. and 12. Jeff Fisher got fired. They hired Sean McVay. Jared Goff entered year two, and they won 11 games. The year after that, they go to the Super Bowl. Bears, 14-34. and 34. In the first three years of Ryan Pace, Trubisky enters year two. They hire Matt Nagy. They win 12 games. Point being, rebuilds do take time. It sounds like an excuse. People laugh at it, but it's a fact that in 2017, they entered a large-scale rebuild. You can't deny that with the players that they lost from 2016 to 2017. The roster needed a complete overhaul in part because of decisions that were made that even predated McCagnan. Not that McCagnan was perfect, his first two years were not good, and he deserves plenty of criticism for some of the decisions that he made in those first two years. You can call them a failure if you want. That's fair, that's reasonable, that's justified. But let's not act like the last three off seasons haven't set this franchise up for a lot of success going forward. There's a reason this was the most attractive head coaching job on the market. There's a reason that people are saying this is an attractive GM job, right? You can't say you love Sam Darnold and Jamal Adams and Le'Veon Bell and all these other guys and then not give credit to the GM who put it all together, right? If the team wins this year, how does Mike McCagden not get any credit when literally his fingerprints are all over it? This is the team that he built. Nearly every single guy on this roster is a guy that Mike McCagden brought in. My stance all along has been that they needed a coach and they needed to get Darnold into year two with some more talent around him. This offseason, you ask anybody, it looks like they accomplished that, right? Almost every analyst, they love the moves the Jets made this offseason. They added some high-end talent. It looks like they had a solid draft. Quinn and Williams, arguably the best player available, a potential first-round talent at edge rusher in round three. There's a lot of solid moves that a lot of people really liked about this offseason. So... I can't understand how Chris Johnson can make the decision to fire McCagnan and side with Adam Gase, who's been in the building for all of five minutes, when he just entrusted his general manager to lead one of the most pivotal off-seasons in, in the last decade for this team. It makes no sense. It's either incompetence or indecisiveness or whatever you want to call it on Chris Johnson's part. None of it makes any sense, and there's no rationale for it. None. You can't justify it. Don't tell me, you know... Don't tell me that, oh, you know, the, the scouts were in place. Right? You wanted to keep the scouts in place. No. You don't let Mike McCagnan pick this roster if he wasn't going to be here. You don't let him sign players if he wasn't going to be here. But wait, Chris Johnson says that he approved all these decisions. That makes me feel so much better, right? That makes me feel so much better because now we're back to ownership meddling in player personnel decisions. That's a great look, right? That's the road that we want to go down again with an owner that has zero football background, right? That makes plenty of sense. There is no way to justify what the Jets have done. It's an embarrassment. I'm disappointed, but at the end of the day, all that matters are wins. That is all that matters. So if Adam Gase is the coach we think he is, 
and they make an upgrade at general manager, which is very possible, I'm not upset. If they get a better general manager out of this, and Adam Gase is truly the coach that we hope he is, and they're winning football games, it's not going to matter, right? We'll all be happy. But I'll continue to say it. If they are winning football games this year with this roster, it's hard to sit there and say McCagnan should have been fired. If the Jets were truly chasing wins the last two years, the starting quarterback, especially last year, would have been Teddy Bridgewater, right? If wins were most important, Teddy Bridgewater would have been starting last year. The most important thing last year was Sam Darnold's development. That was priority number one, right? Same way kind of the year before, they completely tore it all down. A lot of young players were in there. Ended up with the sixth pick, which was better than most people expected. They had to trade up. He doesn't get credit for that though, right? People would rather McCagnon's legacy be Christian Hackenberg, right? Not the trade up to be in position to land Sam Darnold. Tells you all you need to know, right? For whatever reason, some people were never able to let go of that pick. And it's not like he didn't have others that were bad, right? There were plenty of bad picks in the McCagnon era. There were plenty of good picks in the McCagnon era. And there are plenty of picks that are still in years one and year two that we have no idea what they are because Bowles never gave him a shot. So, again, defining McCagnon's legacy today, right now, I think is stupid. People are going to throw out his record. With Bowles as head coach, three OCs in four years, I don't know what the hell people were expecting. But here we are. So I'm on board with the new GM, whoever it's going to be. I'll support him. I'll give him a shot. But Adam Gase is not looking good right now. I do not like the way he handled this situation. I don't like what he's said to the media, how he's lied, saying that he doesn't want any control or uh, say in personnel. He made that very clear in his intro presser, only to go back on it four months later. It's a bad look. Everything Chris Johnson said was complete BS over the last four months. It's not a good look all around. The media is going to be out for blood. A lot of them lost a lot of their sources. You can already tell. Adam Gase better be ready. He's got a huge target on his back, and he better come prepared, and he better win right away, or it's going to, it's going to be a clown show. That, that's exactly what it's going to be. I'm already nervous about Le'Veon Bell because he's already feeling like he's unwanted. It's a shame that he's answering tweets now, um, you know, or, or tweeting about the fact that uh, his head coach might not want him before he's even played a game yet. But here we are. So all you could do is hope for the best, hope that Gase is the right choice, hope that Chris Johnson, you know, saw something that, you know, justifies this decision and, and made it the right one, and he's got somebody in place. But uh, I'm not too encouraged. So go Jets. Enjoy your weekend. I'll talk to you guys soon.